to our internet friends, we see you and we are just so delighted to have you to be a part of what we're doing here. And we continue to encourage you to subscribe to this station and tell your friends and your family about us. Uh, invite them to come along so they too can see and hear the Word of God. And when we hear the Word of God and we heed the Word of God, it's going to make a difference not only in our lives, but in those around us. So we thank you again. Somebody tell me. Welcome you to World Class Sunday School. Uh, again, we are just so excited to be here today. Let us just uh, go in prayer and thank God for, for his goodness and his grace and his mercy toward us. Lord, we thank you for this time of studying your word. We pray right now that our hearts and minds are focused on you, that we have a desire to learn more about you so we can serve you better. We give you all the praise and glory it's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks always. Amen. Again, we are in, in our summer quarter. We are just about to wind it up. We have one more lesson in this quarter after today's lesson. But today's lesson, we're going to focus on a call to proclaim Christ. Our lesson text is uh, found in the book of Acts. And again, we're going to be looking at uh, chapter 9, verses 10 through 20. And to, in today's lesson, we have two outlines. The first outline is uh, the, uh, the role of Ananias, coming from Acts 9, uh, verse 10 through 14. And the second outline, the commission of Saul, Acts 9, Verse, verses 15 through 20. In all this quarter, we've been looking at the, uh, God's urgent call. We looked at God's uh, call to, to the judges of Israel uh, in our first unit. It was entitled, Call to Be Strong. And in our second unit, we looked at uh, God's call to his prophets. And that unit was entitled, uh, Call uh, of the Prophets. And in this final unit in our summer quarter, we're looking at uh, calling in the New Testament and where God is, is calling all of us to uh, be witnesses for him. And I, as I said earlier, the, te the, night, the title of this lesson today is Call to Proclaim Christ. And we are just go, we are just go as we normally would. I, I, but I wanted to bring us up to the verse where our printed text died, verse 10. And if you go back through uh, and read Acts, the ninth chapter, verses 1 through 9, we'll see where, where Saul, the, a persecutor of the church, we were introduced to Saul back in chapter 7 when Stephen one of the seven that was chosen was uh, being stoned, we see that Saul uh, held the coat of the one that stoned Stephen, and he was a, a, pro a persecutor of the church. And here we see in verse nine, in chapter nine, where Paul has gotten a letter from the high priest to go to Damascus to arrest all those who were uh, uh, serving in Jesus' name. And something happened to Paul on his way to Damascus, a very familiar story, how he met Jesus, and as a result, he was transformed. And in our lesson today, we, see, we pick up where uh, after, after his encounter with Jesus, he, he'd gone into the city of Damascus where Jesus had instructed him to go, where to go, and to wait. For, uh, for further instruction. And our lesson picks up today where Jesus uh, 
uh, wake, when, when God calls people for service, uh, he not only calls those who are going to be visible in public, uh, as Paul, as we, we read through scripture as Paul was, but also those who uh, work behind the scene. And we're going to see one Ananias whom Christ used to ordain and commission Paul to go forth and preach in the gospel. Now, Ananias appears twice in the book of Acts, once here in chapter 9 and again in chapter 22. And we see uh, in, here in, in this section that, that we're going to look at today, as we looked at the conversion of Paul, and then Jesus uh, talking to both Paul and Ananias in order to, to move forward in, in his calling of Paul to be a witness for him. And, and remember, as we go through these lessons, uh, it, it, it applies to each of us who, who have accepted Christ as Lord and Savior. We are called to proclaim Christ to the world. That's, that's our commission. And if you, if you want to uh, go back and, and look in the Gospel of Matthew, uh, chapter 28, verses 18 through 20, it, it's spelled out very clear our instructions that, that we have been given by the Lord to go and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever he have commanded us, and then he promises that he would be with us always. And so that's, that's our call, that's our commission. So we don't have an excuse uh, for not proclaiming Christ to the world. Okay, we're going to start out by, by looking here in the first uh, outline, and it's entitled The Role of Ananias. We're going to read verses 10 through 14. And there was a certain disciple in Damascus named Ananias. And to him said the Lord in a vision, Ananias. And he said, Behold, I am here, Lord. And the Lord said unto him, Arise, go into the street which is called Straight, and inquire in the house of Judas, one of one called Saul of Tarsus, for behold, he prayeth. Verse 12. And has seen in a vision a man named Ananias coming in and putting his hands on him, that he might receive his sight. Then Ananias answered, Lord, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to the saints at Jerusalem. And here he has authority from the chief priests to bind all that call on thy name. Okay, so here, here what we're looking at here in, in the in this first uh, outline, the Lord has has dealt is de the Lord is dealing with Saul, and in this portion of the scripture, we see where where Jesus is calling Ananias to go and anoint Paul, commissioning him to be a preacher of the gospel, and. As I, as, as I said earlier, the conversation here, Christ is speaking to both Ananias and Paul. Whenever, whenever the Spirit uh, puts on our hearts to witness to someone, the Holy Spirit is all, not only does he work with those of us who, who he summoned to, to be a witness, but also those who are being witnessed to. And, and here, the... Uh, we see Jesus in, in verse 11 and 12, we see Jesus' instructions to Ananias. He's telling him to go and find, find Saul. He, he has sent Saul to a specific place. Go and find him. And, and in verse 11 and 12, because uh, 
he has already put on Paul's heart what, what would happen. And, and in this uh, 11 and 12 verse, we see, uh, see Ananias, well, actually in verse 13, we see Ananias' reaction. And in verse 13, he says, he, when he answered the Lord, he said, I have heard by many of this man how much evil he has done to the saints at Jerusalem. And in so many words, he was saying, not, not this man, not Saul. Uh, he's, he's a persecutor of the church. And in fact, uh, Paul's reputation had preceded him. Ananias knew exactly who Paul was, uh, who Saul was, and why he was coming to Damascus. And sometimes don't we have that attitude toward people we feel that they are not worthy, uh, that they can't be saved, uh, that, that their hearts can't be changed. But we see here that the, the, the power of God's word is able to change any man's heart. And so that's why, that's why it's so uh, important that we realize in, in our effort to move the gospel forward, that we don't pick and choose who we witness to because the Word of God is powerful enough to change any person's heart. And, and who, who would have thought that this, this man, Saul, who was a great persecutor of the church, would ever stand and, and proclaim the truth of Christ when he was so animated about arresting and punishing those who were serving Christ. But here, here it said, it says, uh, in verse 14, he said, he knew his, he knew his Paul's mission. He knew uh, Saul's mission because he said, here in verse 14, he says, and here he has authority from the chief priest to bind all that call on his name. And that was his, that was his mission to come to Damascus and arrest those who were serving Christ. Okay, so, so in our first outline here, we see the role of Ananias, who, who is going to be a part of the move of the gospel. Uh, Christ is using him to anoint uh, this man that, that he had, he had, he had uh, called to proclaim the gospel, uh, uh, and he's using Ananias to ordain him to go forth and preach the gospel. Okay, so so that's his role. That's that's what the Lord has called Ananias to do. Okay, so let's let's go to our second outline. Here we're going to look at the commission of Saul verses 15 through 20. Verse 15, But the Lord said unto him, Go thy way, for he is a chosen vessel unto me, to bear my name before the Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And Ananias went his way and entered into the house and putting his hands on him said, Brother Saul, the Lord, even Jesus, that appeared unto thee in the way as thou cometh, hath sent me, that thou mayest receive thy sight and be filled with the Holy Ghost. And immediately there fell from his eyes as it has been scales. And he received sight forthwith and arose and was baptized. And when he had received meat, he was strengthened. Then was Saul certain days with the disciples which were at Damascus. Verse 20 says, And straightway he preached Christ in the synagogue that he is the Son of God. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah, praise God. And, and, you know, I was just 
amazed, I'm just amazed how God is able to transform a person from, we know when we, when we look at the, the story of, of Saul, how he was uh, just so determined to persecute the church. Uh, he was so, so animate in his efforts to bring down the church. But when he was converted, he used that same energy to, to preach the gospel for Christ. It, it amazes me how, how this miracle can take place in a person's life. And, I, and look, I can, I'm a witness to that because my life was changed drastically. Now, I, wouldn't, I didn't go through what Paul went through, but my life was changed because of the word and the power uh, of the word of God. And we, we, can't, we can't take this word lightly because it, it's, a, it's the transforming power of Jesus Christ that turns a person around and, and change their heart. But let's just look, let's just look here and see the, uh, how Christ had commissioned Saul in verses 15 through 20. In verse 15, uh, it says, But the Lord said unto Ananias, Now Ananias uh, really sh uh, showed some resistance uh, to, to, be to do what the Lord had asked him to do because of Saul's reputation. And that's, that's a human reaction. Uh, he, he feared for his safety, really, because I'm pretty sure that Ananias was on Saul's hit list. Uh, and anyone else who, who stood for, for, for the gospel, Paul had a letter from the high priest giving him authority to go to Damascus and arrest anyone who was serving Christ. And, and so he, uh, he, felt, he felt, uh, felt for his safety. And that's why he was reluctant. He said, not, not this man, Lord. Uh, <laughs> you must have, have him mixed up with someone else. But he, here the Lord assured him. The Lord said unto him, go, go and do what I ask you to do, for he is a chosen vessel unto me. And see, that, that what makes the difference. When, when the Lord chooses us, when we open up our hearts to him, and he, and, we, and he chooses us, then every, all, all the animosity, the hatred that, that Saul had for the believers in Christ before he was chosen by God, all that has now changed because he is a chosen vessel. And look, we are chosen vessels. God has chosen, he could have used some other means to get the gospel out. But he chose us he, and put that, the, value, the valuable gospel in us. We are chosen vessels of Christ. Who, and, and we have this, this treasure in these earthen vessels. God has chosen us. And we are his choice to move the gospel forward. And, and I just thank God for, for choosing me. Okay? And he's a, a chosen vessel to bear my name before, and look, look what he's going to do here. This, this persecutor of the church is going to be the one to bear Christ's name to Gentiles and kings and the children of Israel. He, he's going to bear Christ's name to, to those who are non-Jews. And then he's going to, he's going to, bear Christ's name to kings. And, and when we, you read the story of how Paul would stand boldly before kings who, and, and, and proclaim the gospel, and then to the children of Israel. And he, Paul, uh, Saul really had a passion for, for his people, the Jews. And you can see it if you go and read uh, Romans, the 10th chapter, how his heart longed that his, his fellow Jews be saved. But his primary assignment, and, his, it, and what Christ is commissioning him here to do, is to carry his name to the Gentile. Okay? 
and, and to the kings and to the children of Israel. He said, for I will show him, God is going to show Paul, uh, Saul how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. And look, it's, it's no secret the things that Paul had to endure for the gospel. And you, when you read it, man, you, you'll see that, that he, he, he endured some devastating things. Shipwrecks, stoning, uh, abandonment, uh, snake bites. and uh, He just went through so much. But he never, he never took his eyes off the, off the mission of the commission that Christ had set him apart for. And we know Paul suffered greatly. And none of us would probably ever suffer as much as Paul did. But then we are, we are chosen vessels also. And so the things that we endure, when we look at the story of Paul and how he suffered, should really encourage us and, and, and give us that much more determination to spread the gospel. And, and we're going to endure some things, but we will never endure what Paul had to endure. And, and here Christ, Christ is just laying it out to him. And a lot of people feel that when they open up their hearts to Christ and when, when they make a, 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 when they strive to be obedient to God, to be used by him, we're going to suffer some. And look, even if we don't, uh, uh, if, if, we, if we don't uh, use uh, what God has given us to stand for him, we're going to suffer. We're going to suffer if we do. We're going to suffer if we don't. But the point is, regardless of what we're faced with, when you, when you see what Paul had to endure, when you allow Paul to be an example for the things that we have to go through, then it should encourage us. And that, that's the point I was, I'm trying to make. Okay, and so here uh, we see here that, that God has, has laid out the plan for, for Paul's calling and commission. He's going to be a witness to the Gentiles. He's going to be a witness to kings to, and, and also to the children of Israel. And he's going to suffer for, the, for Christ's namesake. Okay, and so verse 17 says, And Ananias went his way. He, he was, Ananias went as he was directed, acknowledging Saul's conversion. Because here he says, when he entered into the house and putting his hands on him, said, Brother Saul. This, this is acknowledging that, that, that Saul is not the person that he once was. Because he, when he started out to Damascus, he was an enemy of Ananias. But see what, what the conversion ha has accomplished? Now Saul is not Ananias' enemy. He's Ananias' brother. And it, this just encourages us to, to just know how important it is to, for those who, who don't know Christ to be converted. Because when you think about it, every, every, Christ said, either you're for me or you're against me. Everyone that's against Christ is our enemy. But when, once they are converted, they become our brothers and our sisters. And, and we, we have a lot of enemies. But we need to have a lot of brothers and sisters. So, so when, we, when we witness to someone uh, who don't know Christ and the pardon of their sins, and their heart is open and they accept Christ as Lord and Savior, then they are no longer our enemies. They become, as Saul has become to Ananias, his brother. Brother Saul, the Lord Jesus that appeared to you uh, has come and, and sent me to lay my hands on you. And he was confirming what the Lord had already shown to Saul. So uh, Ananias went as, as he, he was directed. And, and here in verse 17, he confirms uh, what Saul had already 
been informed of in the meeting with Christ. And uh, when, when you, when a person meets Jesus Christ, their life is never the same. And we're going to see a drastic change in Saul before his meeting with Christ and after his meeting with Christ. Oh man, this, this, this thing is, is real, I tell you. Because of his spiritual birth, Saul no longer sees the world as he saw it before. Because he, it says that immediately fell from his ass scales. And that, that, that represents a, a blindness to a spiritual thing. And that's, that's what the world is looking through now. Those who, don't, who have not accepted Christ, they're looking through eyes of scale. And they can't see the spiritual things of Christ. But once they're converted, those scales fall off. Now they see through spiritual eyes. And, and the things of Christ become clearer. Then they can understand the word of God. They can uh, uh, take in the word of God and make it a part of, of their lives when, when the scales come off their eyes. But the scales are not going to come off their eyes unless they open up their heart to Christ. And that, that's, our, that's our, our witness to the world. Uh, we want them to see uh, Christ in the light that they should see him in. And what happened here after the scales fell from his eyes, it said that he got up and, and went and be baptized. And baptism again, uh, outward showing of an inward change. And when you read the story of Saul, how his life changed when he met, when he met Christ. And we know that, that he, he was truly converted and, and now, now he's seeing things in a different light. And instead of persecuting the church, now he's preaching to the church. <laughs> what, a, what a beautiful story this is and how encouraging it is to us to know that when we share the gospel with someone and, and they open up their hearts to Christ, what a beautiful change it's going to make in their lives. And look, friends, nothing else can do that. Nothing else can, can perform a miracle like the Word of God. Uh, what, a, what a beautiful lesson this is. And let, let us thank God for, for using us uh, to sp spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And let us not be ashamed to stand boldly and proclaim Christ to the world. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for this, this lesson that opens up our eyes and our hearts to uh, the call that you have called us to. And let us uh, see the value of our witness to the world. And we just thank you for an example of how a person's life has changed because of who you are. We love you, we praise you, and we magnify you. It's in Jesus' name we pray and give you thanks always. Amen. Again, friends, we thank you for joining us on today, and we look forward to having you on our next time. So until then, may God richly bless and keep you is our prayer.